So in total, with all of my streams of income, farmers markets and events, e-commerce platforms, direct sales, wholesale customers, and my other category, I made Hey everyone, welcome to another video. Today's video is super exciting because I'm gonna be talking about exactly what my company made back in December. We finished crunching all of the numbers, recording all of the revenue from our different streams of income and deducting our expenses from that. And I'm so excited to share with you guys exactly how much we profited this month in our business. If you're new here, welcome to my channel. My name is Jerrica and I am the owner and creator of Quench. And on this channel, I talk everything about my business and how I run it, how I make my products, and also some behind the scenes information about exactly how much my company makes. If you are starting a soap or bath bomb business yourself, then this is definitely the type of channel that you would wanna be subscribed to, so please do so. We are almost at 6,000, which seems unreal to me. Everyone who has helped me get to the point to where I am now, Thank you so much. So for the month of December, we had about five streams of income, in-person sales, e-commerce, direct sales, wholesale customers, and other. <laughs> and I will go into what other is, don't you worry. I will talk all about that and give you the exact numbers of how much we made through each stream of income. And then on the flip side of that, this video will also go into the expenses that we incurred throughout the month of December. If you wanna go straight to the numbers, I went ahead and put in some timestamps in the description below so you can jump around to the information that's most relevant to you. Now, without further ado, Let's get into it. So first we're gonna talk about what everyone is really interested in and that is the income. Like I mentioned before, I have about five streams of income and the first one I'm gonna talk about is my in-person sales and in this I'm including farmer's markets and the events and the consignment situation that we have with a local bakery in town. Last Christmas season, last December, we had a lot of events lined up, a lot. We did a lot of in-person shows and made okay money doing that. Obviously with what's going on this year, that wasn't available. And so we only had one event that we did. And actually it was really surprising to us just how well we did at that one event. The organizer of that event actually found us through the farmer's market and she liked our display, she liked our products and she reached out to us on Instagram and told us about this event that she was having at her pizza and because it was an outdoor event on their patio in the middle of downtown, the rules about vending were not as strict because people are gonna be out in the open air and you could easily social distance on the large patio that they had. I talked briefly about that event in a past vlog, but there was no table fee and it was our first time doing that event with that organizer. So we had absolutely zero expectations as to what it was gonna be like. Safe to say it absolutely blew our expectations. <laughs> we were, I should say Kale was, he was the one that actually did this event while I stayed home, but <laughs> he almost sold out at this event. And actually that has never really happened to us before in all of the events that we've been doing in the three years we've been making soap. He arrived at this event and it was only a five five foot table situation, which is really small for the amount of products that we have. And we didn't really bring that much product as well because we were so busy fulfilling orders at that time for wholesale customers, for retail customers. So we didn't really have the best setup. We didn't have all of our products, but people came to support the local businesses because it was absolutely crazy. I think a part of it had to do with the fact that there weren't very many events happening because of the illness and also because of the location of this event. Like I mentioned, it was a pizzeria, an outdoor patio on the main street of Aurelia. So it had a ton of foot traffic. From what I heard, there were beautiful lights that they put up. It was one of those things where if you didn't even know about the event and saw something like that happening, you would probably walk over and check it out. So I think we had a lot of random foot traffic in addition to a lot of people that wanted to come out to this event to support local businesses. So in this event, we made $1,450.94. I'm gonna have to confirm with Kale on this, but that could be our record number of sales for any event that we've done in one day. We were also so down to one farmer's market in the month of December. We usually attend about four a week back in the summertime and fall. And this farmer's market that we attended turned into a Christmas show. And we had about three Saturdays of going to this farmer's market slash Christmas show. And because this is indoors, there were a lot more restrictions that vendors had to adhere to in order to be able to vend there. Each vendor had to have a barrier between themselves and the customer at their table. And I showed you guys what Kale had made for me and it was basically a plexiglass shield on two posts. And we attended this Christmas show last Christmas as well. And there was definitely a huge reduction in traffic this year for obvious reasons. But even then we still made some pretty good money doing this. So attending this farmer's market slash Christmas show, we made $1,264.63. And it's actually interesting how we made more in one event 
than we did on the three Saturdays that we were doing this farmer's market. So you can see how adding both streams of incomes, local events and farmer's markets can really be helpful in, in boosting your revenue. And I decided to include consignment in this category as well. Even though we're not actually present to sell the product, it's still kind of an in-person sale in the sense that the customer is looking at the product in person before buying it. This is a fairly new arrangement for us, so we weren't sure exactly how it would go, but we're making okay money doing it so far. And what consignment is, is is you put your products in somebody's store and and they take a cut of the sales so through our consignment arrangement we made one hundred and forty five dollars and sixty cents so in total for all of our in-person sales we made two thousand eight hundred and sixty one dollars and seventeen cents our next stream of income that I'm going to discuss is a huge one especially during these times and that is all of the income that we made through our e-commerce platforms we currently have three one of them is Etsy one of them is our main website through Shopify and the third one is local line, which is the virtual version of our local farmer's market. And for our Shopify, we actually had a record month. We've never made this much through our Shopify before. So that was really exciting. And if you're in the position where you are wanting to turn your soap hobby into a soap business, I highly recommend getting a Shopify. I've had mine for almost the entire time that I've been making soap as a business. And even though sales were super slow in the beginning, it was always nice to be able to direct people to that website. It really helped new customers see that I was a legitimate business. Shopify has such beautiful templates too. So you don't really need to know about codes or be particularly internet savvy in order to create a beautiful website. I really think having that Shopify helps my sales huge because people go there and they really like my website. So on our Shopify, we made $2,400 and $63.66. If you wanna check out what my Shopify looks like, the link to that is down below. We also get our income from Etsy. I've had my Etsy for about two and a half years now. I, I started it in 2018 and it slowly, slowly, slowly grew. <laughs> sales on my Etsy have been really good since the beginning of this whole illness began. Even though the sales did die down during the summer, as the Christmas season approached, the sales continued to climb and climb and climb and it really reached ahead in December. And I'm really excited to say that just a few days ago, my shop finally passed the thousand sales mark which is amazing. Back in March, when I didn't have very many sales coming in, I was about 50 sales. So you can see how an Etsy shop can really blow up in a short period of time. On our Etsy in the month of December, we made $6,223.38. And the last e-commerce platform that I wanna talk about is our local line. And like I mentioned before, this is the virtual version of our local farmer's market. So on local line, we made $123.09. So in total, on all three e-commerce platforms, we made $8,810.13. The next stream of income is super important and that is our direct customer sales. And because we do a lot of farmer's markets and because we like to participate in local events, our local customer base is, has really grown. And in this Christmas season, a lot of them reached out to us directly for products, which is awesome. They typically pay either e-transfer or cash. And these are people that we've built relationships with over time. Through our direct customer sales, we made $1,160. The next stream of income is our wholesale customers. Yes, they even put in orders in December. <laughs> I mentioned before that we got a big dump of wholesale customer orders back in late October and early November, which caused us a lot of stress because we were trying to fulfill those orders in addition to all of the retail orders we were getting in. And so in December, they put in more orders to replenish what they had. And we took those orders even though we had to tell them we wouldn't be able to deliver it to them until 2021. And in the month of December, we made $1,928.31 through our wholesale customers. The last year of income is interesting and I call it the other category. And this is income that my business made not through the sale of my products, but through other ways, mainly YouTube. <laughs> I started this YouTube channel back in 2014, way, way, way back a long time ago. I really paid attention to it in September and it has now grown to almost 6,000 subscribers. That is insanely cool. But what came with that was also income that I'm able to generate through AdSense. And I was able to make pretty significant income in the first month of being monetized. I mentioned the dollar amount in a vlog and even showed my analytics from the first two weeks that I was monetized. I was monetized in November 15th and what YouTube AdSense paid me out was for those two weeks where I was monetized. And this is the number that I'm gonna tell you now. I made $446.57 through YouTube AdSense alone in just two weeks. And I actually got that money from YouTube by the end of December. So that was really cool. 
I also was able to make other money through sponsorships and affiliates and partnerships. And I won't go into what exactly I made from those guys, but it was still a pretty significant amount of money. And I will probably do a video down the line about specifically YouTube and, and how I was able to grow this channel as a soap maker. And I know that there are a lot of people on YouTube talking about how they make their YouTube channels and how they made it successful. But I know when I was starting out, I didn't really find anyone specifically talking about making soap and bath bombs. So this is a void I definitely expect to fill in 2021. So in total with YouTube and all of the other types of income that I'm making, not through the direct sale of my products, but through other means, that total is 700. $54.60. So in total, with all of my streams of income, farmers markets and events, e-commerce platforms, direct sales, wholesale customers, and my other category, I made $15,514.21 in December. And as we know, it is not all sunshine and rainbows. Every business has expenses and this business is no different. This is the part of the video where I talk about everything that I spent in the month of December. And as you guys all know, so businesses are expensive to run. The first expense I wanna talk about is our banking expenses. If you have started a business yourself, I highly recommend getting a business account so that you're able to separate all of your business transactions from your personal transactions. And the reason why I wanna do this is so that you're able to track to the penny everything that your business is making and everything that you are spending through your business. It's also much easier come tax time when you have all of that information in one place. <laughs> And the transaction fees that we had to pay this month were $26.25. Now I'm gonna talk about e-commerce fees. <laughs> so to own a Shopify website and to sell on Etsy, there are going to be fees every month. So for Shopify, we pay a monthly subscription fee to actually have that website, and that's around $33. But also Shopify takes a little bit of a cut from each transaction that we make. I shouldn't say Shopify actually, it's the payment processor that we've chosen to use. They take a bit of a percentage through every transaction. And Shopify adds that to the subscription fee every month. So the monthly subscription for Shopify, in addition to all of those transaction fees, came to $43.35. We also had to pay for our domain renewal, and this is something that we pay every year in order to have our domain, say, www.quenchsoap.com, and that was coming close to expiry, so we had to renew that. That cost us $20.95 for the year. So in total, Shopify cost us $64.30. Etsy fees are much higher. <laughs> and the reason is because they take a lot more cuts out of your sales. And this is the reason why if you were to see my products on my Shopify versus what's on my Etsy, my products on Etsy are priced a little bit higher. And I do this in order to offset some of those fees. Etsy takes a cut from every single sale that you make. Etsy charges you for every listing that you put up. And they also take a percentage every time they sell my items through their offsite ads. I want to create a video in the future about Etsy fees and everything that you have to pay in order to sell on Etsy. And even with all of that, even with all of their fees, why I still think it's a good idea to sell on Etsy. That's a whole video in itself. Stay tuned for that. But in total, on Etsy fees, I spent $278.32. In total, with our Shopify and our Etsy, I paid $342.62 to be able to sell my products online in the month of December. My next expense is equipment. And the longer you run your business, the more you realize how important it is to invest in equipment, even though a lot of that equipment is going to be expensive. <laughs> I absolutely make my decisions on whether or not to purchase a piece of equipment on my needs. I think to myself, is this gonna help me produce my product faster? Is it going to help me make more sales? Those are two key factors in me deciding on whether or not it's worth it to buy something. And in the month of December, this was really something that I needed to buy, and that was a humidifier. <laughs> so on a humidifier, I spent $152.53. My next big equipment investment was actually in my YouTube. I wanted to improve my sound quality. I wanted to improve my picture quality. I really wanted to make the best videos that I could make so that I'm better equipped to deliver all of this information in the most pleasant way possible for you guys. <laughs> for YouTube, I invested in a microphone, I bought a new lens, and I bought a tripod. And this is the setup that I'm working with right now, and I absolutely think it was worth every single penny because I watch back the videos on the setup and I'm so clear. The picture is wonderful. I'm really, really happy with that. And on my YouTube equipment, I spent $1,152 and 34 cents. So all in all, on equipment in December, I spent 
87 cents. My next expense was huge, but also necessary. I sell online, so I have to ship every single one of those packages out. And with shipping, you have to pay for the shipping labels. I use two postal services mainly. I either use Canada Post or UPS, and I get my UPS rates through eShipper. So on shipping labels, I spent $1,879.26. My next expense is one I highly recommend for all business owners looking to level up their businesses, and that is subscriptions. And what I mean by that is there are a lot of online programs that you can subscribe to in order to improve your labels, the content that you create through your business, and your business materials. But when it comes to graphics and how I create certain types of content, I love and use Canva. I have been using Canva's free version for years, and I've been completely happy with that, but I really wanted to level up my graphics game and so I invested in a yearly subscription to Canva for the first time and I paid that in the month of December. It was $155 and 88 cents, which equates to about $12.99 a month. And the last expense that I wanna tell you guys is supplies. Obviously with a soap and bath bomb company, you're gonna to have to buy supplies in order to make the products in the first place. And you also have to buy supplies to package and ship out that product. So my supplies expenses included ingredients, packing materials, ink, containers, and even office equipment that Kayla and I have to buy. And in total for our supplies, we spent $2,663.18. So in total, all of our expenses put together, banking, e-commerce fees, equipment, shipping, subscriptions, supplies, we spent $5,908.85. So if you take our total revenue and you remove those expenses from that, that number is our total profit for that month. And in the month of December, we made a profit of $9,605.36. And of course, we have to pay our taxes. We've been estimating that we are gonna be paying about 25% in taxes. So if you take that profit and you multiply that by 25%, you get a total of $2,401.34 in taxes. So in order to know our true profit, which is profit minus tax, taxes, you get a final number of $7,204.02. That is a record profit for us in my entire career of making soap. I'm so, so amazed. This year was really wild and I'm so happy that it ended on such a high note. And even though it was super hard this year, we are super positive about 2021. We're already thinking about all the farmers markets and events that we're gonna be attending and also thinking about all these exciting new income streams that we that our business could possibly be making as well. With that in mind, we are so excited to see where this business is gonna go in 2021 and what our income and expense report will look like in January, 2022. I remember thinking last year, this time last year, thinking about how many bars of soap I would have to sell in order to make this a full-time income. And the number seemed impossible to me. I couldn't fathom having to sell that much. It just seemed so much. But I'm just now starting to realize that the more work you put in and the more time you focus on your business, how possible things can be. I just had to be willing to open myself up to new possibilities and opportunities. And with that being said, I really hope this video inspires you, truly. I honestly wished I had a video like this that I could have watched last year to help motivate me when I was just starting out because all of this is so, so intimidating. And if you're in that spot, if you're listening to all of this and you're watching my video and you are so overwhelmed, my advice to you is to take it one step at a time. Approach it like a student learning everything and being a sponge, absorbing what they can in order to get to the next level. I promise you, if you keep that up, if you are open to learning and trying new things, you will get there. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you found this helpful and motivating, please give it a thumbs up so we can continue to grow this beautiful community of fellow soap and bath bomb makers getting ready to crush it in 2021. If you wanna to continue to follow this journey, please subscribe. And to all of my subscribers, all of you are truly awesome and I appreciate each and every one of you. If you have any questions about what you just saw, feel free to leave them in the comments. That is the place where I will most likely answer them. And until the next video, keep shining, keep smiling and keep evolving. And I will see you in the next one. Bye guys.